talk about, we say that, that God's crowning creation act was when he created man. Well, let's go back also. Now, we studied this just a little bit before, but I want you to uh, understand something about it. What was God's other crowning creation before he created man? What was the highest individual that he ever created? Angels. Besides, well, they were angels, all right, and spirits. Well, Michael. <laughs> Michael was a high creation also. But who was the highest creation? It's be Lucifer. Lucifer. Adam. Lucifer. Now, what does Lucifer's name mean? Like Harry. Like Harry. Now, we're going to we're going to look at him just a little bit, and we're going to compare him with mankind. Okay. We're going to compare him to mankind, and we're going to look at some scriptures. Matthew 9 and verse 34, Luke 11 and 15, Revelation 9, 9 through 11, Revelation 13 and 8, and Jude 9, James 4, 7 and 8, and Job, the first chapter, Luke 22 and verse 42, and Revelation 5, 1 through 9. And also, let's go to Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 to begin with. Okay? Revelation 2, 1 through 3. I'm not Revelation, but Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And then Ephesians 6 and 10. Now, Lucifer is the king of the fallen spirit world. The prince. Prince is what? The prince of darkness, but he, that means king, that he has tremendous authority. Okay? Tremendous authority. Are you guys getting too cold, some of you? Uh, Marilyn, can you turn that up just a little bit? So it won't what goes to cold. Now, he's over the fallen spirit world, and he is the most power powerful being with the highest authority ever created under God. Think about that. Let's think about it. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. Someone go there, Ephesians. Does anyone have the Amplified Bible? Does anybody have an Amplified Bible? Here? <laughs> I know you got New American Standard. Have you got that there, brother? Yeah, I do. Which one are we? 2 what? 2, 1 through 3. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And... You were de dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. All right, energizing is that word working there, energizing the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly <coughs> lived in the lust of, of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. All right, and those ones remaining is what it says, the ones remaining under his power. Now, in this world, you are not your own. I don't care what you think. <coughs> You're not your own. You are either in one or two camps. You're in the devil's camp or you're in God's camp. One or the other. That's it. When you're born into this world, you may have Christian parents. You can have Christian <coughs> parents. They, they, can be, they can dot every I and cross every T theologically. But, that is not enough for you. Because when you come into this world, you're coming in as a free agent. Everything that God ever created has freedom in it. Volition. If God didn't give His creation volition. How could it ever worship Him? He could make robots. But how could something worship God from itself if there was not <coughs> volition, middle voice, <coughs> grammatically speaking? Alright. Now Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Ephesians 6. Have you got that one, Brother Lee? Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. All right. Now, who's he talking? Who's talking? Who's speaking here? 
Paul the Apostle speaking, this is a circular letter. We call it the Ephesian letter, but it is a circular letter. It's really not the Ephesian letter. It was sent out from Ephesus. But it was a circular, or what we call a general epistle to all churches, and he's talking about people in churches. Alright? People, saved people in churches. And he says, be strong, be mighty in what? In the Lord. Alright. Be mighty in the Lord. Go ahead. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Alright. That word wiles there is schemes. Schemes of the devil. The schemes, the methods of the devil. The schemes. Go ahead, Brother Lee. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. All right. He said we, we, we are fighting against spiritual powers. We see in this world, we see physical things and material things. We understand physical and material, don't we? Because we are physical and material, so we understand that. But behind all the physical and the material, there are spiritual forces that are energizing. Like I said, there are two camps in the world. There's the devil's camp and God's camp. Alright? Now, who is the prince and the power of the air today in the world? Satan. He was Lucifer at one time. The crowning creation of God. God almost duplicated himself when he created Lucifer. I'm going to tell you something. Just think about it. How powerful is that snake? As powerful as God allows. But he, look, look what he does in churches. Look what he does in worlds. It, it said in there and there, it says world grabbers. Did Brother Hubbard ever tell you about world grabbers? Now, world grabbers. What is the pride and the, 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 the need for power and control? And egotism, we talk about the ego. Where was the first ego maniac? Lucifer says, I will, I will do this, I will ascend up to God, I'll do all of this. And God made him so beautiful and gave him so much authority. Let's think about that. But he created a being even more powerful than Lucifer. In the end. You know who that is? Mankind. Mankind. In the end, in the final result, in man's final state, mankind will judge angels. Just think about that. We are the only ones that have ever been given the right to say, get thee behind me, Satan. Did you know that? Go to Jude... 9. And look at Jude 9. Look at Jude 9. I want you to see that we fight a terrible foe. A mighty foe. But we have God's power behind us. But His schemes and His methods are very resourceful. <coughs> Jude 9. David does. Uh, you got that one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. Now, we talk about the power of Michael. Now, back in the book of Daniel, when Daniel had prayed for uh, God's <coughs> assistance and guidance, who did God send in the angelic form in that uh, among the angelic realm, which angel did he send to educate Daniel? Gabriel. Gabriel. All right. He sent Gabriel. All right. Now what happened to Gabriel? Gabriel said for two weeks he had been held up by whom? Lucifer. Lucifer. Prince of Persia. Well, but it's talking about Lucifer. All right. Who was over the Prince of Persia right then? Who was energizing the Prince of Persia at that time? Lucifer, Lucifer himself. himself. Yeah. All right. Now see, we see him working among nations. All right. Still working in Persia. Now, he's still working in nations today. Let me tell you this one thing. 
I don't care how things turn out. I don't care how bad things are in the world. It's going according to God's program. Because it's, his, it's what we call His permissive will. And His unpreventable progress. And His eternal purpose. And you are part of that purpose. Mankind is an intricate part of God's purpose. An intricate part of it. Now, it said that in Jude 9, say this again. Jude 9. All right, we're going to go back to Matthew 9 and Luke 11 and Revelation 9 and, Luke, and Revelation 13 and then James 4 in a little while. Now, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him railing accusation, but said... That, that durst there, that means he did not dare. He was not permitted. He was not permitted to what? To bring against him railing accusation. All right. But he said, the Lord rebuked him. So who is the only one powerful enough to rebuke Lucifer? The Lord. The Lord himself. That's right. The creator of all things. All right, well, let's go back in Matthew 19, chapter, or Matthew 9 and verse 34. Let's go back there, Matthew 9 and verse 34. Yes, you got that, Bill? This thing out real loud so we can get you on these recordings here. I know you can do that. I heard you telling jokes out there in the hall. <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Bill. But the Pharisees said, He cast out demons by the ruler of the demons. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. All right. Now, even these Pharisees, that didn't, they were all messed up on their theology. He said that Jesus was casting out demons by the king of the demons. All right? And who would be the king of the demons? Satan. Lucifer or Satan. All right? He is over the angelic and the spiritual world. Now, he took one-third of all spiritual and angelic forces with him when he left, and I believe he took some of Michael's group and, and, and some of Gabriel's group because today you can see that. The spiritual, I think, in the spiritual realm were some of the most powerful angels. Alright? In the spiritual realm. And it said that God had to lock some of them up in the abyss, didn't he? The bottomless pit. The abyss is the bottomless pit. Because why? They were too dangerous to turn loose. Now when are those, those terrible angels and spirits going to be turned loose? They're going to be turned loose for a while, aren't they? During the tribulation period, God is going to allow them to torment people. Because that's what they want to do today. It's torment people. Do demons torment people today? Yeah, Alright. Do you have lust that you have problems with? Do you have, I mean greed? Do you have uh, any, whatever wrong leading? Where does it come from? In the flesh and outside the flesh. To the in and out. Alright. Both inside the flesh, in our Adamic nature, there was some type in the Garden of Eden. What was in the Garden of Eden? The two most important uh, species of plant in that garden, as far as we know. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, God did not short... He did not shortchange... Adam and Eve at all, because who was Adam and Eve's teacher? Who was God. his teacher? God was their teacher. He was showing them everything. Uh, they would have learned everything that they needed to know, so that tree of knowledge wasn't anything extra that they were going to get. But there was a virus. There was a deadly virus in that tree. A deadly virus in that tree. And when woman took of that deadly virus, it was a death-dealing virus. All right? A death-dealing virus. 
And it has affected every one of us since then. And he was real. When they partook of that, when, when God told them, you eat of that tree and you shall die. You shall begin the process of dying. Now the tree of life, there was something in that that gave them eternal life and we're going to have access to that. All of us that are saved are going to have access to that in the eternal ages. Luke 11 and verse 15. Luke 11 and verse 15. Who's got the gospel according to Luke? Caught a Luke on. 11 and verse 15. All right, go ahead, Michelle. But some of them said, He cast out demons by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. All right, now, they had, uh, uh, according to uh, uh, the pagan world, their idea of the ruler of the demons, they, they had part of it right. You know, if you study pagan culture, if you study Catholicism, if you study the uh, uh, Judaism, if you study all of this, some of it has truth. Even in Jehovah, you know, at 4.30 today, we're going to study about Jehovah Witnesses right here in this classroom at 4.30 today. Not Mormon? Jehovah Witness. Oh, I thought it was Mormon. No. No, Brother R. Al's going to be doing that. I'm going to do the Jehovah Witnesses right here. But in that group, they get some things right and a whole lot wrong. But here are these people. They had, their, they had something right that was a prince of the demons. And they named him Beelzebub. Revelation 9, 9 through 11. Revelation 9, 9 through 11. <coughs> Sister Blank, you got that over there? Okay. Get this read up real loud there. I know you can do it. But she's got the Queen's Burden. Oh, well, she's got the authorized. Yes. She's got the Episcopalian. That's this all right. We'll, 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 we'll suffer through it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails and stings like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose, right. name, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon. Abaddon, that means destroyer. That's like Satan. All right. And in Greek, Apollyon. Apollyon. All right, there we go. The one that <coughs> destroys. That's what that name means, destroyer. So who do you think that is? It's who do you think it is? Oh, Lucifer himself. All right. Now, Revelation 13 and <coughs> verse 8. Revelation 13 and verse 8. We're found bouncing around in the Bible here looking at some things. Revelation 13 and verse 8. Have you got that, Anna? Yes, sir. All right. And all the people who belong to this this world worship the beast. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made. The book that belongs to the Lamb who was slaughtered. All right. Now read the first part of that verse real loud again. Verse 8. Verse the first part of it. And all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. All the people that belong to the power of this world. They belong to him. They worship the beast. It's like worldly people. That's the, now what what does Ephesians two and one through three say? We were in darkness one time. We went along uh, according to the course, the pathway of this world. We were energized by the powers of darkness. Prince of the power of the air. The prince and the power of the air, the world grabbers. Now, what is Lucifer trying to do? For a short time during the tribulation period, he grabs the world, doesn't he? And he controls the world, except for one little group of people there. God's always got an administrator in his kingdom. You know that? We are it today, God's church. You ought to say amen to that. Because we're here. That's what we're preaching this morning is God's word. All right? Now, we, when we go born into this world... We're a fair play for the devil, aren't we? How do you get out of the devil's hands? By repenting your sins and calling on the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me and save my soul. That's how you get out of his hands. And then let's go on and look a little bit more. This is a powerful being now, people. <coughs> Job, the first chapter, what's it talk about there? 
The whole book of Job talks about the torment of a child of God in the hands of Satan. And God has barriers over you, and God <coughs> removed one barrier at a time to do what? To prove to us today, the book of Job is written for us. That's the oldest book in the Bible. You know that? The book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. And it's written for you. As we go through the trials and tribulations of life, you need that thing turned down just a little bit to get a little too warm now. Turn it back down just a little bit. As we go through the trials and tribulations of life, read the book of Job. All right? Read the book of Job. Luke 22 and verse 42. <clears throat> and then Revelation 5, 1 through 9. Luke 22 and verse 42. What we got there in Luke 22? You got that, uh, Brother Mike? Luke 22, verse 42? Luke 22, what? Uh, 22, 42. Luke, how to Luke on? According to Luke, the gospel according to Luke. By the way, all four gospels show Jesus Christ in four different lights, don't they? All right? Four different lights. What does the book of Luke, how does he show Christ? Son of man. The Son of man. He's related to us. He's our kinsman redeemer. And under there were four, four flags that flew over the four different directions <coughs> under the tribes of Israel. And there was one that had the face of a man on it. One that had an eagle on it. Just think about that. These all men, and some of you have got those, that little chart I made out, you can see it, but they represent four Gospels. Who's got that now? Luke 22.42. Luke 22.42. Saying, Father, if thou art willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will but thine be done. All right, now there we have the suffering Savior. If there was any other way that mankind could have been saved, Jesus, in his mortal body, said what? Father, if there's any other way, let's do it. <laughs> but, not my will, but yours be done. He was suffering. That was before the cross, people, but he could feel the cross. He could feel those lashes on his back in just a few hours. He could feel that. Here is God the Son, our kinsman redeemer, in the process of redeeming us back to himself. I told you here... I think it was a couple of weeks ago. When did I preach Prisoners of Hope? Was that on Wednesday night? That I, I preached that? Prisoners of Hope? And Prisoners of Doom? It was a couple of weeks ago. Prisoners of Hope and Prisoners of Doom. You know, in the Old Testament, as I look forward to the cross of Calvary, they were prisoners of hope. They looked forward and they hoped in space and time, that God would send His Son, that there would be a Redeemer. The first child that Adam and Eve had, they thought it was a Messiah. And they named Him Cain. They said, we have gotten a man, even the Lord. They thought the Messiah was born to redeem them. They were living in hope. But what did that son do? That was the first murderer, the first overkill, the first slasher, the first Jack the Ripper. That was him. What a disappointment. But they kept looking forward, they kept looking forward, they kept looking forward. And if you look back through here all through time in the Old Testament, what is the book of Ruth about? The book of Ruth. That's the book of what? The kinsman redeemer. That's why the book's in there, people. Ruth the Moabites. How about Rahab the harlot? Way back there in the Old Testament. How about Rahab the harlot? Remember when she, where did she live? I've been to the city where she lived. Jericho. Jericho. All right. What was her job? She was a prostitute. God could even save prostitutes, couldn't he? Well, he did that. Yes, young lady. Um, why did God allow uh, Cain to kill Abel, right? Yes. Uh, why did he allow that to happen? Uh, had he already just given them free will? I mean, God didn't have any control in the very beginning with Adam and Eve and the first. <coughs> he gave them volition. 
You can't get anything to worship you unless it can or can't. All right? Either it will or it won't. All right? Now, Cain. Cain was the heir. He was a child of the promise. He was the firstborn. Abel was no threat to Cain ever. Never. Cain was the promise. I mean, Cain was going the wrong way. Wasn't he? By choice. By choice. He was going the wrong way. And what did his brother Abel tell him? He said, Cain, you can straighten your whole life out if you want. If you only want. If you only will. But what did he do? Instead of, you know when you preach the gospel, you've got two reactions. What are they? People either run from you or they listen to you. <laughs> they either want to kill you. <laughs> oh, they love you. One or the other. And what did... What did happen back then? Now, did God approach and give him a false promise? Did God give Cain a false promise? Was that the first murder, though, in the Well, Bible? that's the first murder in the Bible. You first think, shedding of blood. Do you think he actually meant to do it, or because it was the first one? Did he he did it. Premeditated. He, he not... He, he uh, in Hebrew, it tells you a lot. He sneaked out there and got him out there where he was out of the way of everybody else. And he murdered him, and he slashed, and he slashed, and he slashed, and he slashed. You know, I, I was in a, at a class yesterday, and this woman had been arrested for stabbing her husband. And it was in the class. She said, I only did it once. Huh. And she said, I really didn't stab him. I threw the knife at him and stuck him right in the back of him. <laughs> well, that wasn't what happened with Cain. He slashed, and in Hebrew it's a PL stem. He slashed, and he slashed, and he slashed, and he slashed. So it wasn't with the rock then? He slashed. They had knives back then. But it wasn't with a rock though? What? It wasn't with a rock? No, he slashed him. How were they making sacrifices? What were they? How did they? How was the kosher way to make a sacrifice? With a knife. They had knives. Okay, they had knives. They pulled her head back and cut their throat. All right? God had showed them how to make the sacrifices. The sacrifices stood for what? The Messiah. Okay. Now, the word Zeth. Remember when we studied the name Zeth? What does the word Zeth mean? After Cain killed Abel, he threw away his right to heirship to the spiritual. He was going to be heir. He was going to be the administrator in God's kingdom on this earth. But he didn't want to. Okay? Now, God replaced him. He replaced him with his brother named what? Not, not Abel. Do you think Abel could have raised up? Uh, do you think God could have raised up Abel from the dead? Yeah. I believe that. I believe that. Do you believe it? Yeah. But Abel wasn't the heir, was he? He was never a threat. Now, if you don't believe that, go to, to Genesis, the 22nd chapter, over there where Abraham was taking Isaac up on... Mount Moriah, which is the city of Jerusalem today, up on where the where the Mosque of Omar is today, that that golden domed rock up there, over that rock, that's where Abraham took Isaac. And he said, on the bottom at the bottom of that hill, he told his servant Swap, You wait here, and I and the lad, we will go up there and we will make our sacrifice. First person plural, we will. And we shall return. And in the New Testament it said that he believed God. And he believed God that if he killed that son, he knew God had promised that through that son would be many nations. If he killed him, God would raise him from the dead. Now God could have raised Abel from the dead, I'm telling you. But Abel took his place in God's economy. And God raised up Zeth in his place. Zeth means substitute. Now who should die and go to hell forever? All of us deserve that. But we have a substitute, don't we? We have a substitute. All right. Now did we, we go on 22, Luke 22, 42, we got that one. All right. Revelation 5, 1 through 9. Revelation 5, 1 through 9. Brother Bill. Real quick, Jeremy. If, 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 if the birthright is still with pain, if you accept it, it was... Zeth was substitute. Yeah, he took over the birth. That's right. He was his substitute. And why did why did Cain lose his heirship? 
Because he, he murdered. All right? <clears throat> he murdered. All right, that's why he did. Now, Revelation 5, 1 through 9. Revelation 5, 1 through 9. Who has Revelation 5? Does anybody have a... Brother Randy, what do you have there? A New American Good, that's, that's a good one. That's a, a better translation. I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to break its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look into it. Then I began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the book or look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. <clears throat> Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. And I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and the elders a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, set out into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. When he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each one holding a heart of gold and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break the seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Now, Brother Farrar, Brother Blanton, you remember what Brother Farrar used to call that little book? I don't think I do. God's title deed to his whole oh, yeah, creation. Yeah, remember. remember that now, brother? Mm -hmm. All right. That's God's title deed to the whole creation. Now, you know what? Back in the garden when God created mankind, mankind replaced Lucifer. And he made man, how? His image. In his blood flowing, shadow casting like This is God. God made man in his shadow casting, blood flowing likeness. And then while the, when the old day, when the old Nahash, when the old devil, through that snake, Nahash, when he deceived that woman, what did that devil tell the woman, Brother Blanton? You can be like God. But they already were. I mean, already like God. Yeah, they were already like God. They tricked him big time. They were already like God. In the Old Testament, it said, ye are gods. Remember that? When the Lord was talking to the Pharisees and scribes, he said, didn't I call you God? Why did God call man God? Because we're triune in nature for one thing. And we're made in the image of God. They were already like God. They already had the whole title deed to the creation of God and God told Adam to do what? Guard it. Guard it. The word is terrain in Greek. And that's the word in Matthew 28. It says... I know King James is out there in the twilight zone in so many places. And in that place is definitely in the twilight zone. How many of you can quote the Great Commission correctly? <laughs> in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. I can do it. All right. I can't quote it, but I can do it. All right. <laughs> Brother uh, Randall, do you know what it says there? After you've been scattered. After you've been scattered. It doesn't say, go ye therefore. That is not the command. That's not the imperative. It says, after you've been scattered and cast out, what is the, what is the command? What is the commission? Make habitual learners. Make mathetes. Make learners. And what do you do with the learners? You dip them. No, I don't seem to say baptize. Not a King James word. I don't like that word. You know, they got mixed up, mixed up with Rontizo and Nipto. Rontizo means to sprinkle, and nipto means to pour, but baptizo means to immerse. That's what it means. So John the Dipper was John the Dipper. All right, he said, you dip them. Dipping, we're going to have a 
baptism tonight, and we're going to baptize Jeff and Lori, and we're going to bury them in water. And I hope none of them sticks up out of the water. I don't want them down underneath the water because that typifies what? A burial. A death and burial. Sprinkling is not a burial. Pouring is not a burial. Dipping is a burial. All right? A death, burial, and then what? Anastasia. Resurrection. Resurrection. <laughs> All right, that's, that's Anastasia. You know, Anastasia, that's her name. That Princess Anastasia, her name was a Resurrection. That's what her name was. Matter of fact, when Jesus talked to the uh, uh, Greeks up there on Mars Hill, by the way, the name of this class is Mars Hill. You know, Areopagus means Here's Mars Hill. A right there. yeah, there's, there's a picture of Mars Hill up there. That's what this class is at Mars Hill. When he was up on Mars Hill, he preached them Jesus and Anastasia. And Anastasia is a feminine word. So they thought that he was talking about Jesus, another God, among their many, and Anastasia, or Anastasia, his wife, his goddess. But when they found out they're talking about Jesus and his death, burial, resurrection, they said, don't hear any more about this. We don't believe in the resurrection. The resurrection. Baptism. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to guard with their lives terrain all things that I've handed down to you. Now you people today have authority that is very powerful. And he said, Lo, I'll be with you unto the end of the what? Of the age. He said that church is going to live all the way from, from Galilee all the way through to the tribulation period, to the rapture, to the raising up of the saints. All the way. Not James, the fourth chapter. The book of James. The word, the word James is actually Jacob. The Hebrew word Jacob. Jacobu. Alright? What is terrain mean again in Greek? What? Terrain in Greek. What is it terrain, it means to guard. guard. Present infinity. In back. Greek? Yeah, Greek. Alright, to guard. <coughs> Terrain. That's what it looks like in English. Probably read my Greek better than my English. <coughs> Terrain. It means a guard with your life. Now, uh, James 4, 7 through 8. Let's look at man's crowning creation. Have you got that, Tony? James 4? How about Sister Andy? You got that? No? All right. How about... Uh, I got it. What do you want? Go ahead. James 4, 7 and 8. James 4. Now, this is the book of James. This is Jesus' half-brother, by the way, that wrote this book. This man was intimately acquainted with the Messiah, and he didn't even believe the Messiah was the Messiah to begin with, did he? It took him a long time to figure this one out. After the resurrection... But now after the resurrection, he talks very powerfully about his half-brother, about him being the Messiah. And he talks about how his power on earth. Now, let's go on with that, Brother Hernando. Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, and you sinners, and purify the hearts, you double-minded all right. It says that we can do what to the devil? We can resist the devil. What does the word resist mean? You keep back. That means to stand against. Man. Now, Michael, Michael couldn't bring any accusations against the devil himself. He said the Lord do. But what are we told here? Stand against him. And he will flee from you. Just look at the look at the Matthew the fourth chapter. Matthew chapter four. What does that talk about? Remember when Brother Madden, you know old Brother Madden, you know, he was your teacher and your pastor, Brother Blanton. Yeah. When when he, when I was taking New Testament survey from that rascal, he made us memorize the whole New Testament. By we had to memorize the whole New Testament by subject. 
where Matthew started, everything, we had to go down, he gave us a big piece of paper, and he says, Matthew through Revelation, write the subjects where they begin and end all the way through. <laughs> you know what? If you did that, learn a lot. You learn where things are in the Bible. You can figure that out. All right. <clears throat> Our Matthew had to do the same thing. He still do that. Found yeah. Have to memorize. That's what you call New Testament survey by subject. Right there, we have Lucifer. Satan disputing with God the Son. And what is he doing to God the Son? Just look about it. Just think about it. Now here's our Savior. Here is our substitute, our Zeth, on this earth. Here's the second Adam. The first Adam gave us death. The second Adam gives us what? Life. Life. All right. The first Adam gives us the virus that causes our death. The second Adam gives us eternal life that we live on forever and ever. How does it go out there in, in, in Matthew, the fourth chapter? Who's there in Matthew chapter four? Are you all, who's, who's got that? You got, got that right there? Right, right there in verse, start off with verse number one. Then was Jesus led up to, <clears throat> led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. All right. Now he's correcting the devil. The devil is using, he, he's, he's really tempting Jesus. Was Jesus really in a body? He was in a legitimate body he got from the woman. The seed of the woman, Genesis 3.15, he was really in that body. Here is the real Hamashiach, the real Messiah, Christos. Okay? Whole Christos. This is the Messiah, and he's standing there, and he's being tempted by Satan, and is he hungry? He is really hungry. How many of you ever called for three days without eating? <laughs> I remember when, where my wife? Keep <coughs> going. How many of you were in my classes when I came home from the hospital after that cancer surgery down there and I had lost about 40 pounds in that hospital? I hadn't eaten for seven days. Seven days I didn't eat it. Boy, I just melted. I came up here and I mean I'd stand twice and make a shadow almost. <laughs> I was skinny. I was hungry. After seven days, I guarantee you. They gave me something, and I didn't even like it, and I ate it. <laughs> then it made me sick. And then I wouldn't eat anymore after it made me sick. And I went without eating for another couple of days. I hardly ate anything in the hospital. I think it was in there about 9 or 11 days. That's a long time to go without eating. I lost a lot of weight. When I got home, I tried to make up for it. I knew my wife wasn't going to poison me. It was something I wasn't supposed to eat. <laughs> Biscuits and gravy. <laughs> I could eat anything back then, just about. But you get hungry, don't you? Now, us, we would be tempted. But what did Jesus say? Turn those bread, turn those stones into bread. Now, he could have done that, but he would obey the, 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 the deceiver. Remember? The deceiver. The liar. What was the next, what was the next temptation, brother? We're almost finished. <clears throat> then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, now here we have the Lord thy God talking to Satan. And what did he say after he said jump down off that temple? What did he tell old Lucifer? You shall not tempt the Lord your God. I am him. Don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. Forget it. Alright? Brother David. 
Go on a little bit further. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. All right. Now, what did he tell him again? I want you to see the story in there. I want you to look at that. Let me jump up that. What did he? What did he say? He, no, he said, "I can give you all this world." Was that a legitimate offer? Yeah. Who owns? Who is the prince and power of the hour right now? Still, Satan. Satan. He thinks he owns it. Yeah. Well, he's got it for now. I hope. He offered him all the kingdom of this world because he controls. We're still in, he is still in control of those. But where in the book of Revelation there, where it talked about the title deed to God's creation? Huh? That's right. Beautiful. The title deed to God's creation. Now who's going to get that back? Uh, the, lion, the, lion of the Lord Himself, the Lion of the tribe of, the tribe of Judah, is going to take it back. And in the meanwhile, in this world, in this age today, where we live today, we can say to Satan, Get thee behind me, Satan. And he says what? He will flee from you. We're the only being, that's how precious you are to God, we're the only being that God ever gave us right, the right to, is to say, Get out of here, Lucifer. Get out of here, Lucy. Thank you for your attention today. I hope you learned something from God's Word. We'll start right here on the creation. Man, I have to give you that to see how beautiful your relationship to God is. It's better than angels. All right. Brother David, are you going to... Let's go over these uh, prayer requests and then we'll pray and be dismissed. Uh, Joanne has a, a <coughs> prayer request for Jeff, Jeff and Lori being baptized tonight. That's actually a praise. Amen. Amen. And Anna. Um,